the safest place if World War III happens. You're packing your bags hurriedly, trying to fit as many things as you can into a small, easy-to-carry backpack. You and your family are in a rush. You leave the house with your luggage, locking the door behind you and taking one, perhaps, final glance at your house. You then make your way to the airport, where the sound of panicking individuals trying to leave the country is as loud as the roaring sound of fighter jets flying above you, and artillery passing through to get to the battle zone. World War III has officially begun, and you decided to leave for safety. You look outside the window as you finally board the plane. You then rest your head on the headrest and look at your ticket. There it says, Destination. Switzerland. According to experts, the war between Russia and Ukraine is the most significant conflict the world has seen since World War II. And with other conflicts rising from all around the globe, like that of China and Taiwan, the question must be asked, is there a possibility of a World War III happening? And if so, where is the safest place to go to survive the war? Well, I kinda already spoiled it with the first scene, so why Switzerland, you ask? Let me explain. First of all, for centuries now, Switzerland has been a neutral country in terms of global military affairs. In fact, they have not been involved in a military confrontation since the 1800s. Now, they're not the only country that practices neutrality. Ireland, Austria, and Costa Rica practice it too. Switzerland has definitely been the oldest, most recognized, and most respected. This dates back to 1515 when the Swiss lost to the French in the Battle of Marignano. Following the defeat, the Swiss Confederacy decided to cancel their plans of expanding and focused on avoiding conflicts with other countries in the interest of self-preservation. It wasn't until the 1800s when Switzerland was forced to fight, when France, led by the great Napoleon Bonaparte, invaded them. After the Napoleonic War, Switzerland finally declared their perpetual neutrality in 1815 during the Congress of Vienna. During World War I, Switzerland accepted refugees but remained neutral in the actual conflict. When World War II came, they also held their neutral ground despite being surrounded by Axis powers like Germany and Italy. In fact, they continued their transactions with Germany despite the atrocities of the most infamous mustached man in history. You guys know who I'm talking about. Today, neutral Switzerland still isn't part of the European Union, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, better known as NATO and joined the United Nations only 20 years ago in 2002. Thus, even though it is surrounded with powerhouse countries, that will most likely take advantage of it. But it isn't just Switzerland's political stance that makes them an ideal safe haven in case of a third great war. They also have geographical advantages that a lot of countries don't have. In general, Switzerland is enveloped with huge mountains and dangerous terrains that make it difficult for invaders to attack. But to be exact, Switzerland has three distinct geographical regions. The first one can be found in the southern part of the country, the Swiss Alps Tower over their border with Italy and Austria. The Swiss Alps comprise most of the highest mountains of the Alps, such as the Dufour Spitz, which is 4,634 meters long, and the Dom, which has a height of 4,545 meters. Meanwhile, in the northwestern part of Switzerland, the Jura Mountains lie and it spans through their border with France. While the Jura Mountains is an as tall as the Swiss Alps, it's formidably tall in its own right, with the height somewhere around a thousand meters or more. The last distinct geographical region in Switzerland is the Swiss Plateau, which lies between the Swiss Alps and the Jura Mountains. It covers about 30% of Switzerland's surface and is where most of the country's population lives. It is where Bern, Switzerland's capital city, is located, as well as major cities like Geneva. The Swiss Plateau is also the center of the economy in Switzerland, and where the important transportation happens. Furthermore, if enemies somehow reach the Swiss Plateau, which in itself, if breached, does not have the best defense against invaders, the Swiss still have a backup plan. They can leave the big cities and make their way to the southern Swiss Alps. There, Waiting for the Swiss are bunkers in strategic positions and equipped with anti-tank guns to dispatch forwarding enemies. Additionally, they have bridges and roads that can be remotely destroyed so the enemies can't use it. So we've established that Switzerland will not join the war and other countries will think twice about attacking them because of their geographical advantages. The question that needs to be asked now is if Switzerland can handle wild missiles 
and other nuclear weapons that might find their way to its lands? Well, the short answer is yes, very much so. Nowadays, the strength of a country's military power is greatly measured by its nuclear weapons and capabilities. Just recently, Kim Jong-un has pledged to expand North Korea's nuclear arsenal. According to the Arms Control Association, as of January 2022, there are a total of nearly 13,000 nuclear warheads in the world, and 90% of it is owned by Russia and the United States. To be exact, it is estimated that Russia has 6,257 nuclear warheads, while the US has 5,550. Thus, a third great war happening will likely involve a nuclear showdown between some of the most powerful countries in the world. This could only mean that even if you don't get involved in the war, you might still experience the destruction of a full-fledged nuclear war. Luckily, Switzerland is well equipped for these kinds of things. To this day, Switzerland remains as the only country in the world that has nuclear shelters. Its capacity is 114% of the population, which means that it can house everyone in their country plus another 14%. In fact, in Switzerland, every resident must have a nuclear shelter within a 30-minute walk from their homes or a 60-minute walk in mountainous regions. Now, you might be asking, how strong are these bunkers? Well, according to stipulations, the shelters can withstand 12 megaton-class nuclear explosions at 700 meters. In other words, it's pretty strong and pretty safe. Eternally neutral, hard to breach, and pretty safe from nuclear warfare. If you're not from Switzerland, you can only wish you could say the same thing about your country. I, for one, do. What can you say about Switzerland as a safe haven if World War III breaks out? Any other countries in mind? Comment down below.